For the last couple of years, I've been exposing the West's propaganda war against China and these claims that China is carrying out some sort of genocide against the, the Uyghur people of China's Western Xinjiang region. But this is a propaganda war that I've just kind of realized is more ridiculous than, I, than even I realized. And I want to point your attention to this Sky News article. Uh, and this was published very recently, June of this year, 2021. It's called Paving Over the Dead. And this is what they claim in the first paragraph. Sky News has uncovered evidence showing the extent to which Uyghur sites are being bulldozed and built over as part of China's efforts to change the autonomous region they come from. And this is a very carefully worded way of saying that, isn't it? To change the autonomous region they come from. Change can mean anything. It could be good, it could be bad. They know that they're lying to you uh, about many things, and I'm going to get into that in just a minute. Uh, but the main thing that they're lying to you about is that China is erasing the Uyghur people off the map, and that this change is part of what they're, they're going to call a cultural genocide. But what they're really admitting to here is that there is development going on, and they're going to spin normal development that happens in any urban area as some sort of sinister conspiracy by Beijing to culturally genocide the Uyghurs. And you're going to see just how ridiculous it is. But one other thing I want to point out is that every single example that you're about to see here has already been reported on by the Western media for years. So this is not Sky News uncovering anything. This is them recycling old lies told by CNN, AFP, BBC, and many others for years now. And they're just repeating these lies again, hoping you don't notice that these are the exact same examples that have already been used and, and debunked too, by the way. And I'm, I'm going to show you that. So the, the first example is this Grand Bazaar Tower. And here they show this picture. And if you look at this picture, you're like, wow, it looks so faded. The color is strange. It kind of looks like a photo from the 1970s or maybe even the 1960s. And they're saying this is before 2020. And then this is after 2021. And it's gone. The tower is gone. So here's a satellite image, 2018. And then... 2021, it's gone. So let's see what they have to say about that. One of the clearest losses to the city's skyline is the Tower of the Grand Bazaar. It was not a particularly old building, only completed this century. Only completed this century. When I think when people hear that, they think within the last 100 years. But what Sky News actually means is this 21st century, the last 21 years. And as a matter of fact, this was completed in 2010. And then it was demolished, I think, around 2019. So it wasn't even around for 10 years. And they even admit it's a shopping complex. It had been closed off and looks abandoned, apparently ready for redevelopment. It still stands, but the high Islamic-style tower, one of the tallest in Xinjiang before its removal, has been completely demolished. Now, let's go to here, Uyghurism.com. It's run by this guy, Bahram Sintash, who is admittedly working for Uyghur Human Rights Project, which is funded by the US government through the National Endowment for Democracy. It's the first one right here. And uh, Sky News actually cites him further down in the article. But let, let's see what he says all the way back in 2019, by the way. So Sky News is pretending they just discovered this. This is something uh, the anti-Chinese smear campaign has been talking about for years. Uh, China might tear down the tallest minar in the Uyghur homeland. And he's showing you these pictures of it and he's showing how they had these architectural features that had been removed and then the tower was presumably next. And then down here he shows what is clearly a commercial building. This is a, a rendering used during the design process. You can see it's clearly a commercial property. It is not a religious building. And he even admits here the center tower of the building was designed to be 99 meters high. The top of the tower had a 360 degree view cafe. The Grand Bazaar of Houghton was a department store for electronics and appliances. It was not a religious building. That was not a religious tower. It was a 360 degree cafe. This happens in cities all the time where a large commercial property is developed. The business is unsuccessful. It is abandoned. 
And then when a new buyer buys up the land and wants to redevelop it, buildings are demolished. They're trying to spin this as if this is some conspiracy by Beijing to culturally genocide the Uyghurs. One 360 degree cafe at a time. And if we keep going, they talk about this cemetery. So there's this cemetery. Uh, here it is in 2018. Here it is in 2021. It's a parking lot. Now let's go to Google Earth. This is 2021, the most recent image, and they're obviously building something there. So the cemetery is being redeveloped. Uh, it's not just a parking lot. They're obviously building something else there as well. And if we zoom out, we're going to notice that that cemetery was right in the middle of this city. Uh, and if we read other news articles, say this one from 2020, last year. So again, Sky News is claiming they, they just discovered this. This is something that the Western media has been lying about for years already. Authorities to destroy Uyghur Cemetery in Xinjiang capital. So they're talking about another one they're claiming is going to be destroyed when what they actually mean is moved. Uh, but they also mentioned the one in Hotan. And they go through this article and you will see that the Chinese authorities are talking about the whole process of moving these cemeteries. This is Radio Free Asia. This is U.S. State Department media. Even they are admitting that the Chinese government was moving these cemeteries, not actually destroying them. And this is something that happens all over the world. Uh, 50,000 dead Londoners to be moved to a new graveyard in Surrey because of HS2. This was a rail project in London, and they had to move all these graves to a new cemetery because they're right in the middle of the city and they had projects that they needed to develop and building over the graves was not an option. And the same goes for Hotan in Xinjiang. And then Sky News, AFP, the BBC, U.S. State Department funded media, they all took turns making this out as if they were just paving over these, these people's graves. If we keep going, uh, we just see more and more examples of the same exact thing, this shrine, these other cemeteries, these mosques. These are all things that have been repeatedly cited by other Western media organizations. And then down here, a report by Bahram Sintash, who I was just talking about for the Uyghur Human Rights Project said, the destruction of mosques is at the heart of the Chinese government's campaign of cultural genocide in the Uyghur homeland. It appears their ultimate goal is to eliminate the Islamic faith from the region. They're not erasing anything. They, they moved those cemeteries. Uh, the tower that was destroyed was part of a shopping complex, not a religious building. This is just regular development spun sinisterly by liars in the Western media and these fake fronts funded by the U.S. government created specifically to smear and attack China. I've been covering the West propaganda war against China for years. I'm going to continue covering it. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Think about subscribing to the channel. It's free to do and it helps the channel grow. Check the video description for the links to all of these articles and, and read them for yourself and see just how dishonest they're being. Uh, and also in the video description are ways you can help support my work, like by becoming a Patreon member. You can support my work month to month. I give a little bit of extra content to my Patreon supporters. And there's also lines of communication where we can share ideas and kind of build a community around uh, this work. Uh, I also want to thank people who have been supporting me in every way, including one-time donations. I've had people send me cryptocurrency. Thank you so much for that help. Without that help, none of this is possible. I greatly appreciate it. And as always, thank you for watching.